All right, welcome back. This is our first video lecture covering Guy de Maupassant's The Necklace and also Kate Chopin's The Story of an Hour. So, um, here's the way this is going to work. Quick biography of both writers, some things to keep a lookout for in both stories, uh, the common theme and why I tied them together, and then I want to close down by telling you what kind of quotes and questions you might expect on a test from these particular two stories. All right, so biography first. Let's talk a little bit about Guy de Maupassant. As his name probably told you, he's French. Um, he lived in the 19th century, which is to say 1850 to 1893. Um, he was a French literary artiste, which is to say that he was friends with other famous French authors, i.e. Gustave Flaubert, who wrote Madame Bovary and Emile Zola. Um, his stories are known for being really concise, really tight, and for having a little bit of a moral edge. I'll talk a little bit more about that here in a minute. Uh, moving forward, let's talk a little bit about Kate Chopin, one of my favorite writers. Um, so Kate, as I like to call her, we're kind of homies, um, also lived in the same time period, second half of the 19th century. She, however, was American, though born in St. Louis. Most of her stories are set in Louisiana. And this is because she lived there for many years. As your book tells you, she actually lived just south of Natchitoches for many years. And in fact, up until fairly recently, you could visit the Kate Chopin house here in town. It actually burned down, unfortunately, a number of years ago. Uh, but if you go look downtown on the Walk of Fame in Natchitoches, you'll see that she's on there, as she well should be. So, um, Kate Chopin was obviously a woman writer in an age when female writers were not common or well-respected, and that in and of itself was surprising. Um, but even more surprising is the way that she dealt with women's issues and in other stories, particularly her later novel, The Awakening, with women's sexuality, which for its time was absurdly shocking and sort of led to her eventually being ostracized from society as a provocateur, if you will. Uh, Kate Chopin was largely not considered a great literary figure for most of the 20th century until she was rediscovered, laid on, and now she deserves the proper uh, reputation that she deserves. So, let's talk a little bit, kind of flipping back and forth, let's talk a little bit about the necklace. Um, as I mentioned earlier, Guy de Maupassant is known for short, tight, by which I mean the plot is very well constructed and very... Uh, there's not a lot of dalliance, it doesn't, there's not a lot to get lost in, it's very straightforward, and also somewhat moralistic stories. So when I think about the necklace, the question is always to me whether or not Matilda deserves the ending she gets. And I'm not going to spoil it for you because you may have watched this first and it's not the test question, um, but it's a surprising, devastating sort of an ending. And the question that always makes me wonder is whether she did enough to deserve what happens to her in the end. Um, and that's something I want you guys to be thinking about. I picked this story as a great one to start with because it is so simple and straightforward. You can sort of see that it starts with a woman with issues, i.e. she's very uh, wanting, she's very desirous, very covetous of what other people have, wants to live outside of her means, and is also really cruel and unappreciative of her husband. And then, through various sets of circumstances, she uh, gets her attitude adjusted. So that's what I think about when I think about the necklace. Moving forward to the story of an hour, we have a similar story in that it also has that tight, succinct structure. What we see here is another example of an author giving us a straightforward story where you can understand um, a lot of what's going on. And of course, both of these stories sort of have a lot in common. We have a female main character who is subjected to a sort of interesting set of circumstances, which causes a great change to come about in her, which leads us to ba -da -ba -da, kind of a twist ending. Uh, both of these stories, and a lot of early short stories, have these twist endings, wherein you get to the last page and it's like, Aha! Now I know what's going on. It's, it's sort of a big surprise when that happens. Um, this 
some people really like it. They really love the way that it sort of gives them a surprise and you get to the end, you're like, ah, oh, I get it now. And you sort of feel smart. A lot of people though, they feel that these are super derivative. And once you get the hang of it, it's sort of like reading or rather watching an episode of Scooby-Doo in that if you know there's gonna be a twist ending, you can start guessing what that twist will be about halfway through the story. And that kind of, uh, over time, was seen as a little too simple. But I think it's a great place to start, and I think these two stories are enjoyable to read and teach us a lot about the beginnings of fiction. We see here stories with a beginning, a middle, and an end. In other words, you could say that as we have a starting situation, rising action, events that cause our characters to change their perspective or their situation, and then in the end we see all of that concluding in a short sort of flippant manner. So, um, those are these stories. I want you to read them, I want you to comment about them in the forums, and if you have any questions or comments, uh, by all means post in the forums or send me an email or shoot me a text message. Thanks guys.